For some people, Boyle's Law is not an easy concept to understand. Today I will help you understand by using a real-life example. In order to demonstrate the concept of Boyle's Law, I traveled all the way to the Dominican Republic for an in-depth experience, scuba diving. If you ask any scuba diver, they could easily tell you what Boyle's Law is. This is because it relates a lot to protocol of proper diving safety. The absolute pressure exerted by a given mass of an ideal gas is inversely proportional to the volume it occupies. The temperature and amount of gas remain unchanged within a closed system. Simply explained, within a zone in the ocean where the temperature remains purely constant, as pressure on that gas increases, the volume of that gas will decrease. One factor increases just as much as the other decreases. This is called an indirect relationship. Today I brought a plastic water bottle with me on my dive. Don't worry, this is just for demonstration purposes and will not be left in the ocean. At the surface, the bottle is filled with air and has little pressure acting on it. As I descend further into the ocean, the air within the bottle slowly becomes more and more compressed. Why? The answer is Boyle's Law. As you go deeper into the ocean, the pressure of the water increases. Like I said, Boyle's Law states that as pressure increases, volume decreases. Now, since both factors vary inversely, look as I start to ascend and end my dive. The air within the water bottle began to expand once again. This is because the pressure in the water was decreasing as I got closer to the surface. Therefore, the volume of air increased. I hope you are now able to understand the concept of Boyle's Law. Now let me explain how this concept actually relates to scuba diving. Just like pressure was exerted onto the air in the water bottle, pressure is also exerted on the compressible parts of our bodies, like the air in our lungs. The fact that these places contain air makes them vulnerable to pressure and volume change. All of the gas inside of these compressed areas, as well as the gas in our scuba tanks, becomes compressed as we descend in the water. This is why you might see less bubbles coming from a diver's breathing apparatus as he or she goes deeper in the water, and more bubbles as he or she ascends toward the surface. The main reason why Boyle's Law is so important while diving is because of what can happen if a diver ascends too quickly. The tissues inside your body contain nitrogen, which builds up over time. This is what happens when we breathe day to day. A slow, safe ascent from a scuba dive will allow this nitrogen to expand at a calm rate and dissolve into the tissue. If a diver ascends to the surface too rapidly, the nitrogen dissolved in his or her tissue will expand too quickly, forming tiny bubbles. These bubbles can stay in the tissue where they interfere with blood vessels. They can also form under a person's skin and around their joints, thereby reducing blood flow. This causes decompression sickness, also known as the bends. If you hold the air in your lungs as you ascend, your lungs can overexpand, causing either a stroke or a collapsed lung. Despite whether you're getting certified to scuba dive or not, Boyle's Law is still seen in real life experiences throughout our day. Just think about when you open a bottle of soda. 